Everybody loves traveling. Uh, for more on China's numbers and the economy and everything going forward, Jeff Moon, president of the government relations consulting firm China Moon Strategies. Good to see you again, Jeff. Let's start with these, um, these retail sales and consumer spending. Um, these are all the rebound numbers that we were all expecting, right? Because they're coming out of COVID. We're going to do the revenge spending, the revenge travel. This, is, this could be just the beginning. It could. I mean, this is very positive. It's positive for China. It's positive for the rest of the world. Uh, retail sales are particularly important for China because the success of the dual circulation policy depends on domestic consumption. Um, and also, we know that this recovery is going to be different than past recoveries. Past recoveries were fueled by infrastructure investment. This one will probably be fueled by consumption. So these trends are very encouraging. We, we've always talked about the importance when it comes to China. They've always traditionally relied upon exports to fuel the economy. And over the past decade, there's been a lot more talk about domestic consumption. Uh, this is going to put this whole entire, I guess, strategy to the test over the next few quarters because we went through a, a time where really everything was, not on everything, but much of the country was, was shut down or at least uh, closed down, and now things are reopening. Do you expect, or I should, what should our expectations be? Do we expect a fast recovery, or do we expect kind of a, a slow-moving multiple dot plots, so to speak? Well, I thought actually that right after COVID and the lockdown lifted, that actually the recovery would be faster than it is. Um, I think that we are in the uh, recovery has started. Things are moving forward. But the really big question is, how sustainable is this? A lot of this is pent up demand. Over the longer term, what's going to happen? That's really a big question. And there are a couple of factors out there. And, you know, the National Statistics Bureau said that this recovery is not yet solid because you still have factors like real estate, which is still declining, though not at the quick rate that it was before. And, you know, with regard to exports, exports actually declined. Um, and that could be another factor that will play into things um, because, and particularly, you know, the strength of the foreign, foreign countries that are going to buy Chinese products has something to say about that export trend, too. Right. You've got real estate. And you also have the fact that, you know, when you close a factory, you don't just open it up. It's, it's not like a light switch. You just turn it on and off. It, it, it takes time, right? You have to get the orders. You have to get the employees. You got to produce the stuff. You got to ship. There's a lot of moving parts to getting the system back to where it was, say, pre-pandemic. The, the goal of 5% growth target. Some people are saying that that's perhaps too conservative. So, some may argue it's maybe too aggressive, but I, I think it's just such a difficult moving target because there are so many question marks. And one of the biggest ones you pointed out is we don't know what the rest of the world is going to do for the rest of the year. I, mean, I can't even tell you what might happen this weekend, the way the news is going. Right. Absolutely. Things are a bit unpredictable. I think that 5 percent, most people think that's a fairly safe assumption that China could actually do better than that. Um, so, you know, a lot of companies and governments sort of give numbers that they think they can probably hit. And I think that's probably the case here. We saw a jump of inflation both in Europe and also in the U.S. following the, the, the reopening from the pandemic. Um, some people are a bit perplexed why we don't see perhaps the same level of inflation when it comes to Asia specifically. And, and maybe you can even discuss uh, China. Is it because that's where the manufacturing base is? But, you know, they also have to pay for input prices as well. Yeah, I mean, China is unique in so many ways. I mean, the, uh, the way COVID affected China was unique. The way real estate affects China is unique. The ability to uh, transfer assets abroad in China is unique as well. So I think that affects um, some, some of these things. And then you have to, uh, you can't ignore the, the geopolitical concerns that are out there as well. Uh, it's no secret that the relationship between the U.S. and China is not fantastic by any means. Um, although, that said, trade is actually doing very, very well. How should investors, I guess, view this relationship when it comes to economic growth? I think investors are really confused, especially coming out of the two sessions. On the one hand, Chinese leaders are talking about how foreign businessmen are welcome and visas are now valid again and you can travel again. Um, on the other hand, there's talk about containment and a great wall of steel. A great wall of steel would prevent trade altogether, would shut everything down. Um, so businesses react to uncertainty by, by not acting. Um, and so I, I think that that uncertainty is really unhelpful 
Um, and to the extent that governments on both sides contribute to that, I think that um, they could take measures to temper things down. Well, I, I, I think most people would tend to agree with you. A little de-escalation probably be good for the, uh, the economies of both countries. Jeff, uh, appreciate your analysis on this. Thank you. Thank you.